Hi, Dr. John Alchemy here with Rate Fast. Today, I want to talk to you about activities of daily living and understanding how they are the drivers of impairment values. First of all, what is activity of daily living and how does it play a role in impairment ratings? Well, when someone becomes maximally medically improved, we have to create something called an impairment report. It's basically a snapshot of how people are doing at the time of their recovery when the doctor has determined that there's no more meaningful recovery that's going to happen in the next year or so. One of the very important things that is in that report is a discussion about activities of daily living. And sometimes this kind of gets glossed over and that's really why I wanted to do an educational piece on it. So in the AMA guides on page four, there's um, a table, table one two, and on it there's 34 activities of daily living. And these are considered comprehensive for um, uh, people who are basically living their lives. Now, what's important to remember about the activities of daily living is that they are indeed activities of daily living. They are not activities of work. It is very important in your mind that when you're thinking about activities of daily living, you're not thinking about work, which is a little bit confusing because the AMA guides are used to determine settlement values for workers' compensation. That being said, one of the reasons that we use activities of daily living is because it's a commonly shared activity between all people, regardless of their occupations. Now, in the AMA guides, if you read the entire book, you're actually going to see that there's a triad of three things that are actually equal, but simply named something different. The first is activities of daily living. Again, those 34 activities that people commonly share with one another that determine the completeness of human activity as far as the AMA guides are concerned. The next one is whole person impairment. Now, whole person impairment is a little tricky because all reports have to um, submit and and uh, have a completed impairment report, and the value or currency of that is whole person impairment. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that whole person impairment is a reflection of activities of daily living. That's all it is. And they're basically reflections um, off of what people can or can't do. Remember, zero whole person impairment means that the person has no symptoms, no limitations of activities of daily living, um, and that they're fine. Whereas 100% means that person is dependent on others for nearly all of their activities of daily living. Think of someone who's bedridden or even someone who's in a coma that can't do anything for themselves. So that's kind of the scale between zero and 100%. And again, that whole person impairment value is a reflection of the activities of daily living. Now there's a third piece and we hear about that more frequently and that's the pain score and pain values. And actually pain values in the AMA guides, if you turn to chapter 18 where it talks about pain, you're actually gonna see the different um, categories of pain, mild, moderate, severe, very severe. And it's actually referenced again by activities of daily living. And that's really what I wanted to highlight in today's talk is that activities of daily living are really the central measurement of an impairment report. And the more you understand them, the more that you can find them, read them in the report, the better that the report's going to make sense. Now, what does an activity of daily uh, living measure? Well, it measures all these activities of self-care, driving, um, lifting, sleeping, reclining, um, sexual activity, everything that we you know, basically consider as part of human function. And so again, there's 34 activities of daily living. They're in table 1-2 and they're on page four. Now, for our purposes, if we really want to get specific about activities of daily living, there can really only be two types of activities of daily living that can be affected. One is an activity of daily living where you have pain or symptoms, but it does not limit the activity. So Maybe I have a little bit of pain when I lift, but I can still do lifting and complete the task. And then the other one is activities of daily living limited. And that's where the activity of daily living is actually what I call broken. It means that you've had to slow down in your rate or you can't do it um, uh, as many times as you used to be able to do it. So, and then, and then there's a component of endurance. And let's talk about that a little bit. Um, I always use this example that before I got hurt with my knee, um, I could walk three miles an hour for two hours. Um, after I hurt my knee, I can still walk two hours, but I can only walk for one mile per hour. So, so my rate has been limited as a result of that injury. And then if you flip that around, maybe before my injury, I could walk um, uh, two hours and I could walk three miles per hour. But now if I walk three miles per hour, I can only walk one hour. So my endurance 
um, has been altered. So we always think about things of rate and endurance when thinking about broken activities of daily living. And that's very important because when the author of the report is referencing activities of daily living, remember, they're actually describing the impairment of the report. And what happens often in the AMA guides is sometimes um, a specific table will give you a fixed value for impairment. Like um, I can raise my shoulder to 170 degrees. Well, that's one person, uh, one percent of whole person impairment. Fine. But sometimes um, there are things like class class range. Um, we see this a lot in like lumbar spine, for example, in the DRE tables. And in those tables, um, there's sometimes a range like between 10 and 13, whole person impairment. And the real question is, how does the doctor pick that value between 10 and 13? Well, they go back to their activities of daily living and they figure out how many activities of daily living the low back has affected. And once you know that, then you can place them at 10, 11, 12, or 13. So, um, and the AMA guides is also very clear at the beginning of the book. It says that the activities of daily living are used to class an individual um, when there is um, a range for the doctor to determine. So just to kind of sum it up again, activities of daily living, really the central driver of impairment rating in the AMA guides. And it's on a table in the fifth edition on page four, it's table one dash two. And remember that basically categorizes all of the activities of daily living of being an individual. And it basically class matches everyone with one another um, to stabilize and level the field of impairment rating when we're looking at impact from an injury. So I hope this has helped you. I want you to think about activities of daily living. We'll look forward to seeing you at the next session. Thanks again.